Hi, my name is Deshaun Lee, and I'm going to do my talk on nicotine um, plus a high-fat diet, how it leads to abdominal lipolysis um, with resulting hepatic and muscle steatosis, and how that's not mediated by the alpha-7 nicotinic receptor. Okay, wonderful. All right, start off with um, cigarette smoking. You know, we all know that cigarette smoking is. We went over this before. Can you give us that? Okay, so real quickly, cigarette smoking is bad. Um, <laughs> people die um, and have, you know, COPD, cancer, um, and what our research is focusing on is more so the um, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So, we actually harvested uh, liver tissues from um, animals that are C57 black six that are obesity, um, high fat diet, obesity induced. And um, we studied the, f the fat accumulation, the hepatic steatosis. Um, if you look at the highest panel of uh, pictures, you'll see the, the pink. And in the pink, what we notice is the white space. Look, focus on the white space, and that's where um, lipid accumulation would happen. Um, the bottom pictures are actually a different type of standing where we keep those lipids, so it kind of confirms that that white space would actually be the lipids that we have forming. So if you look um, from left to right, you'll see an uh, increasing gradient where you see you have your normal diet, and um, there's not so much hepatic steatosis going on. Uh, same thing with normal diet plus nicotine. Now when you move over to high fat, you're going to see more hepatic steatosis. You're going to see more white spaces or those lipid globules that you see. And then it's exacerbated when you add nicotine to high fat. To do this, like I said, we use uh, C57 black six mice. Um, and in those mice, some were given either normal child diet or high fat diet, which is really, really high fat. It's just like lard. Um, and in those groups, we either injected them with nicotine or saline, which we used as a control. And the um, liver pathology was um, evaluated using high resolution light microscopes. So um, we noted that we see this sort of hepatic steatosis going on. So what we decided to do was use a lipolysis blocker, which is a sip box. And we found that it fully attenuates this uh, hepatic steatosis that, that's exacerbated by high fat diet when in combination with nicotine. So you'll see from going from uh, left to right, um, the high fat diet, you see the lipid accumulation plus a sip mark, not so much high fat diet, plus nicotine, you see a bunch of uh, lipid accumulation, but it's pretty much blocked off when you use um, a Cipamox, which can be pretty therapeutic um, in future uses, hopefully. Uh, we also did studies in the, in the muscle. We got gastrocnemius muscle, and we kind of see some of the same sort of things happening where you have abnormalities caused by high fat diet in combination with nicotine. So if you look at the upper panels, you see um, the intramyofibular IMF mitochondria, um, and they look relatively normal. Um, but when you add high fat diet plus nicotine, not only do you get the sort of lipid accumulation, you also get uh, abnormal looking mitochondria, which can no way be good. <laughs> um, so moving on. With those results, again, we use a Cipamox, and we tried to block that. So focusing again on the nicotine plus high fat, because we don't see that in just high fat alone. We see that when you combine it with nicotine, you're going to see the fat accumulation um, and the abnormal mitochondria, and then you see how it's blocked by a Cipamox. That rhymes. So not only is there a sort of fat accumulation, not only is there abnormal mitochondria, there's more problems associated with high fat diets and <laughs> nicotine. And what we've seen is that like um, the student was talking about earlier is that you're seeing more apoptosis. And we've quantified that uh, through staining and you see looking at the top panel where you see that as you look from left to right, again, you see in the high fat diet, you're seeing more apoptosis staining and then high fat diet plus nick even more so. And that's uh, a little bit more easily, easily visible by looking at the graph where you see if you focus on the uh, high fat diet plus nicotine, how that graph is significantly increased um, as far as apoptosis is concerned. She's, okay, um, moving forward much faster. Um, 
So we did a Western blot, and we saw that there's a higher concentration of um, CCAS2, um, which is indicative of apoptosis and focused on a pathway, caspase 2 and inos. As you increase with high fat diet and nicotine, you're going to see more apoptosis. Um, if you look at the pathway, you have nicotine plus high fat diet. It adds to oxidative stress, which releases caspase 2, J and K, inos. You look all the way down and you get apoptosis, which is uh, cell death, and that's not good in a sense. So in some of our earlier findings is that nicotine uh, plus high fat diet makes hepatic steatosis, and, uh, um, lipid accumulation, abnormal mitochondria, the addictive uh, effects. Basically, nicotine is bad. And when you <laughs> treat it with a sipamox, it, it makes things less bad. And um, as far as in, that actually initiates this sort of pathway to apoptosis, um, focusing on the nicotinic receptor, the receptor to which nicotine binds with is the uh, alpha-7 acetylcholine nicotinic receptor. Um, it's a uh, pentameric ligand-gated channels of, and it's um, members of, a, of the cis loop receptor superfamily. And what happens in short-term um, exposure is nicotine is kind of therapeutic, but in long-term um, exposures, not so much like we saw earlier because uh, we actually do chronic studies and that's where our pictures come from. Um, and activation of the alpha-7 receptor is protective against cytotoxicity and um, suppresses oxidative stress. So you would think that nicotine would be beneficial, but again, not in chronic studies. Um, and then, you know, this oxidative stress is, you know, associated with um, NAFLD, so on and so forth. Um, but emerging data now shows that apoptosis is a prominent feature in patients with um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic um, non -alcoholic hepatic statuses and correlates with um, disease severity. So, how much more time do I have? Um, <laughs> geez. <laughs> okay, to determine <laughs> a specific alpha-7 um, receptor, what we use is um, alpha, uh, agonist. We agonize the um, alpha-7 receptor to see if that's the cause of the weight loss. And um, to speed things up, what we found out is that is that um, alpha-7 severely depresses the um, weight gain. If you look at the um, blue graph, it's just the control group. You have high-fat diet animals that are just being injected with saline. The bottom group shows the depression that happens because of nicotine when on high-fat diet. And then the uh, alpha-7 agonist, there's even more weight loss associated, which means that um, nicotine, nicotinic weight loss isn't happening just via the um, alpha-7 receptor, and there's other things involved. So um, again, we're seeing some of the same things with hepatic steatosis, but when you get to um, the agonist PNU 28, 29, there's, um, it's not getting worse. It's actually better than nicotine in that sense. Um, and you see pretty much the same thing when you just focus on the actual lipid globules. Whew. So in summary, um, nicotine treatment significantly uh, blocks weight gain. Um, the treatment of the alpha-7 agonist shows a more dramatic weight loss. Um, nicotine, but not um, <laughs> alpha-7 agonist, increase the um, hepatic statuses, and um, the alpha-7 agonist blocked the uh, high-fat-induced hepatic statuses. In conclusion, there are opposing roles in the alpha-7 alpha-7 nicotinic receptors in the regulation of body fat and ectopic lipid accumulation and the dietary effect induced obese mice. This effect um, of hepatic steatosis seems to be mediated by something different than the alpha-7 nicotinic receptor, which is why the um, alpha-7 animals gain, I mean, uh, lost much more weight than everybody else. Um, and the protective effects of the alpha-7 agonist on hepatic steatosis may be mediated through um, suppression of oxidative stress and hepatocellular um, um, apoptosis together with the improvement of insulin sensitivity, which I mentioned earlier. And currently, we're actually doing um, experiments focusing not just on the alpha-7 agonist. We're actually using um, MLA, uh, which is an alpha-7 antagonist. Um, and we actually use that with nicotine. We're looking at different types of relationships in that sense. Um, and we believe that targeting 
this alpha-7 nicotinic receptor may uncover a novel approach to treat diet-induced obesity, non-alcoholic fat, fatty liver disease, and adverse metabolic sequelae problems. Um, questions? Thank you. Thank you, Deshaun. Great job. Any questions? So the dose of the agonist you use, and in terms of interpreting it for clinical outcome or mm -hmm. development of a, another um, uh, agent, pharmacological agent, is it in the dose range that would be clinically relevant? Yes. Um, well, Dr. Freeman would be more of an expert on this, but You're pretty much- You're giving the talk. Everything, <laughs> everything that we- Just say yes. Yeah. Yes. Everything that, that we use is, is actually um, clinically relevant. We're, we're, um, our team is, you know, we're driven to actually eventually get to um, the treatment of humans. And this is something that's extremely problematic, and um, we're just investigating on ways to um, attenuate those problems. Okay, so we're gonna... okay, this is a fascinating compound that has been found to have antioxidant properties, anti-inflammatory properties. Um, I'm surprised not the other pharmaceutical companies are jumping on this, and we're... Um, that's what I was wondering right. about. That's yeah. why I asked about the clinical dosing and mm -hmm. Right, it hasn't been tested in people at all, as far as I know. But At least not problems. for what we're using. Um, there is some uh, patents on it in psychiatric diseases. Also. Any other question? So Come here. Not yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, um, all things in moderation. <laughs> you know, the, the huge, huge schizophrenic people, uh -huh. they love nicotine, <laughs> and it helps them actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, you know, all so, things in moderation, and, and, and okay, let me revise that. All things in moderation, and it depends on the problem. It and, might help, it and might so hurt, is the, but the Parkinson's most people, patients, they love nicotine. And, and I'm pretty sure it helps, but, you know, for the most part of American society, nicotine has served to historically be pejorative in health. It reduces body weight, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so but it's, it's better to just um, work out. 